discipline and attendance if it's not a kindergarten. Kind of recapping some of those important dates that we break down, of course, uh, the February uh, third deadline. Uh, March typically is the K day, uh, the kindergarten day. That we do have some students that end up going to their hopefully their uh, school of residence at that point, and we had some kids this year change their mind. I want to go to that school, so that was a very beneficial piece. Uh, deadline for all applications. And then we've always said kind of May 15th, and well, that's what I was told, May 15th is kind of the expected date for that decision. Uh, we actually did that at the board meeting on the 28th for those uh, transfers that have come in at that point for this coming school year. I know you can't see that online, uh, but hopefully you've seen that in the past. That is our transfer paperwork that talks about the fees and the process through that. You can view that online if you're a parent. You can go to any single school in our county uh, and receive that as well. Um, got some spreadsheets that I did for you. Of course, you've had a week or so to look at those. Uh, but kindergarten transfers for 2014, uh, we had 219 thus far that have made or requested a transfer. Uh, I do want to draw your attention to the out-of-county transfer down at the bottom, 17 of those. I think that's a, a nice uh, piece to, to bring to your attention there. Of course, we have some schools that are gaining students in this process, and we have some uh, schools that are losing in this process. I did a little research from Dr. Fisher's past. Uh, these numbers are pretty customary to the past uh, in terms of the number of transfers. Um, this next piece looks at just elementary. This is K-6. I want to let you know these numbers. We did pull out of here the students that have already had a past transfer. For example, if somebody was changing schools that we forced to do a transfer to, you guys have already approved that one time. We didn't want to mumble those numbers up for you with that. So these are uh, more first-time transfers that you're looking at uh, in this process. Let me turn my on there. Um, we're looking at 147 there in the elementary range. And again, uh, we've talked about this before. The majority of these transfers are somebody that's living, for example, myself in the Faulston District, and I moved to uh, you know, the Union District and I want to remain at Faulston. That is typically the majority of our transfers in there. Uh, we've got things like transportation and daycare issues. Those are the majority of our transfers that we're addressing uh, in this range. Secondary transfers, um, again, we have those two in front. And then there's nothing different in this piece. The majority of those transfers are students that are at Shelby High School that want to stay at Shelby High School or at Crest High School or Burns High School and they want to finish out their career at those sites. Um, so the majority of those people uh, are asking uh, are that range there. Some results, um, transfers that were turned in prior to April 3rd, you know, a little over 450. Uh, after April 3rd, 293. Now we'll be very honest with you. Probably that next week or so, right after that deadline, we had a, still a lot come in. Of course, they got it in on time. That they said it was in the in the mailbag or that kind of thing. So, so you know, some of that 293 uh, went to that first time. Uh, of those, none of those transfers were denied. I did put a note down at the bottom down there for you. We are down a little bit uh, with kindergarten students. Last year we had 1175. Uh, this year, 1128. I want to move to our uh, athletic piece. I guess I'll change my hat slightly. Athletic piece and talk about the 365 day transfer policy from the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Uh, I've got to read a lot of this word to word, but then I'll elaborate a little bit. It says, High School Athletic Association transfer policy uh, it is after initial entry into ninth grade and absent a bona fide move. So a change of residence is not a transfer. Okay? If I live at my house and I move to Kings Mountain. That is a bona fide change of residence. That is not a transfer. Um, if I don't have those two things, then I'm looking at the next two, A and B. Student transfer from one member school to another member school within the same LEA must sit out 365 days. The second part of that sentence is important. The LEA may create criteria for immediate athletic eligibility for transfers within the LEA. Our next slide will explain a little bit about that process that we do in Cleveland County Schools at this point. B, a student transferred from one member school to a, in one LEA to another member school in a different LEA must sit out 365 days. 
exceptions for that eligibility uh, from one LEA to another, they have to go to a transfer committee as well at the state level. For example, if I transfer from Rutherford County to Cleveland County, we can approve that, but they still have to go to the waiver process from the High School Athletic Association. Let's look in our handbook. Each of you had a copy of in, in your report. This is just a basically a copy of a, a certain section. Um, and really, if it looks, I think it's board two. When a student changes school, they must obtain a board approved uh, education transfer to become immediate eligible and not sit out 365 days. When you go through our handbook and our athletic handbook, it is in there three or four times of the policies that have been in place for several years now. Um, so basically, those are the process, those are the waiver processes to sit out 365 days. Now, some of you have asked for different options in that process. We'd like to share a couple with you for your discussion tonight. When a student transfers is initiated upon entry of ninth grade year and beyond, okay? There are some of the options we can keep it as it is presently. If you meet the board approved transfer criteria, the athlete is immediately eligible. That is what we have in place right now. If we do a board approved transfer, any student that transfer is eligible to participate in athletics. We could implement a 365 day rule for all high school athletes uh, that have a board approved transfer with no exceptions. Basically, if you transfer to your 10th grade year, you guys would grant uh, that transfer, and that student sits out, sits out 365 days, no matter what it is. Okay. Uh, option or bullet three: You can implement a 365-day rule for all for all high school athletes that have a board-approved transfer, with the option of a committee to review that transfer to become immediately eligible. That is what several of our counties are probably doing around us. Gaston County has that review committee uh, as well. They implement some criteria to look at that review committee and then they make that recommendation uh, to the board. And then lastly, we could implement a 365 day rule for all high school athletes that has a board approved transfer with the option of requesting the board hearing become immediately to you for that year to be eligible. Um, and of course, you're very smart and a whole lot smarter than I. There's other options that you may think of that I have not. Uh, several of you have called this week and, and asked some questions and, and hopefully have answered that, but at this time, Dr. Fisher, I guess I'll turn it over to you and the board, uh, Mr. Dr. Hammer, for discussion. I'm sure some have questions for Brian and also comments. I'll keep a record of who's speaking so we can thank somebody next and hopefully get around all the way around before we come back to the body. Yes, sir, Mr. Brian. Uh, I like the idea of that committee from all the way around that you had there, but would that committee be selected from all four, our, I guess, our districts, Shelby, King Mountain, Burns, not just uh, all in one section? Uh, I think that recommendation would come from you guys. I, I think that criteria would come from you guys. Is that correct, Dr. Fisher? I, I think to answer Mr. Blanton's question, I, I would 100% agree if that's the direction that we chose to move and we had a committee to review those, that committee would be representative of our of our community, meaning that we would have a representation from all attendance zones. Uh, in other words, two from Burns, two from Crest, two from Shelby, two from T. It, it may look like, yes, yeah, it looks something like that, you know, uh, but, but it would be a committee representative of our, of our community. Uh, not just just the community. I wanted, I would want. I want to. I'd like to say that it. We made sure that it had to be somebody from each school district on that committee. Uh, I think if you put a committee together. You'd you'd want to be sure that that was that was taken care of. Any other questions? Yes, my question would be about the committee too. And I understand y'all keep saying that it would be up to us, but. We look to you for guidance, but that would be um, a combination of school personnel and just lay people out in the community and some board members. Or what? What are your thoughts on on a committee? I, I, I think you want our thoughts, and you come back and tell us. 
But let, let me interject one point from Hammond on the board member on that committee yeah. would be I, I would be cautious to put a board member on that committee because the committee turned one down and then it, it came for an appeal and the appeal would come to the board. Right. Uh, but I do think that Mr. Blanton would, that Mr. Blanton said we would want all four attendants on the representative yeah. in the committee um, and we would want to make sure that um, uh, my, my thoughts would be that, that the, the policy would be probably the board to explain how that community would be selected and then um, like I don't know who would select people. And would that committee change every year? It, it could. It could be a lot of things in the media. That personnel changes obviously have to be some kind of changes there with that. Uh, it may be something that we get the community together. The consistency would be important. Dr. Fisher, may I elaborate a little bit on the committee? Yeah. Well, you can go ahead. I was just going to go ahead with the, I like the last bullet out, um, actually. When we look at, I do like the idea of the committee, um, but if we're looking at the idea of oversight, and uh, I talked to a couple more members, I feel like, you know, we're the ones, you know, going to ultimately approve these or whatever. Um, the hearing can come before us. Um, we can listen to the particular cases and it gives us more oversight. Um, now that's a lot more work, I am aware of that, but I mean, if we're gonna take it out of the hands of this current system we have, I, I'd like to put it back in our hands so that we can ultimately have the decision. That's just my opinion. Well, I'm, I'm in for that to happen. In other words, uh, even when that committee came up for that recommendation, that it had to come to our hands for us to find an approval. Well, how many people are we talking about? on the committee or students? I mean, no, uh, how many years are we looking at? I think that's a big question. Are we looking at 10? Are we looking at 50? Or are we looking at 100? How many transfers do we have? What you have here in front of you from that report is 101 transfers that happened in the secondary uh, system. Obviously, uh, some of those would not be athletics. Right. Um, but you know, I really couldn't tell you on the process how many of that could be. Um, some of the simple things I think Dr. Fisher was looking at in terms of the committee, uh, some of those that could be possibly, I guess, weeded out. When you look at the criteria for a committee, um, you may set the standards for that. For example, uh, let's see, there's a sibling in that school, or a school employee, or a previous transfer, or remaining. You know, some of those parameters that you can make that would help eliminate some of those things to narrow that field down that are pretty easy to say this is why that is. Um, those are some things that you can put forth to that committee. That's just an option. Maybe social services assigns to that zone we need to move. So let me just make sure I understand. Because I know that that our criteria is that, that if an employee employees are allowed to, to let their children go in whichever zone they want. So are we saying that if an employee has a child who plays a sport, and so we automatically allow that transfer because it's an employee's child, would they automatically be allowed to play immediately because they're an employee's child, or do they? Do we revert back to the under the present system that child that takes place, right? Under the future system, that's your call. If there is a future system, excuse me. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, Dr. Hammond, I know I understand ultimately it, it rests with us in terms of what action group alternative we decide. I'm just curious uh, that uh, with some of the other counties we have similar uh, procedures, what what uh, what system or format are they at? The two that I made contact this week. Uh, Rutherford County, I have that policy, and their committee looks at, for the athletic director of their committee to look at medical or health related, um, social service court order, uh, student protection, students of employees and siblings. Those are the ones that that committee looks at to verify those, and they pass on. Um, and they may, you know, not, those are the ones that they approve, I guess, of looking at that. The other ones, you know, that may go to the board or whatever. Uh, in Lincoln County, um, the superintendent assigns students 
uh, to zones or if they feel like there's a waiver of the student, the superintendent assigns students to zones. For example, um, a bullying issue. Uh, if it's Ms. Miller, I'm going to assign Ms. Miller to East Lincoln Middle School and that student is automatically eligible. Um, so that person is kind of the, the hearing person that that is and then they're automatically eligible when the, when the superintendent assigns them. Uh, Rutherford County has not returned my comment. They don't have an athletic director in Rutherford County that is over that. So of uh, the people that I'm speaking to and some other folks around, it seems like there's a committee to screen and then the board to appeal. Um, but there is both ways. Does that answer your question, sir? One, one quick question. The definition of high school athletics, are we talking about cheerleaders? Uh, are we talking about... Uh, this is going to be dangerous, uh, Mr. Glover. <coughs> We're in the High School Athletic Association, cheerleading is not a sport. So we're using their definition. Correct. Ryan, I have a couple of questions. Uh, Jerry, did you want to ask I don't want to. I, I, uh, I think that uh, we, the board already has the oversight in this with, after you all make your recommendation. And there is an appeal. So there is the option of an appeal if there is a transfer requested that you do not uh, approve. Is that correct, ma'am? So you already have the mechanism for that. Uh, I, I personally am not sure we need two oversight committees uh, since essentially there's already one, maybe not a committee in name, but there's already uh, a decision made. I'm confused a little bit about the timetable on the out of county. I know we don't have that very often, but you said we could approve it, but it has to go to NCHSA for an uh, opinion or for a decision. Is that the ruling decision there, or in other words, it really doesn't matter what we say? No, sir. It provides no impact on their. We, we have to provide the transfer. If uh -huh. we provide the transfer to the student from Rutherford County to Kings Mountain High School, or uh, North Gaston to Kings Mountain High School. We would approve that child to come in and participate academically. If they want to participate athletically, since it's an added county to, in, you know, to our county, they do have to request a waiver to the High School Athletic Association. And that is a two week to month process depending on their turnaround. Since I know there are many other sports, but it seems to be, to me, most of the comp most of the complaints come with regard to football. Can you tell us what the, for X number of years, how many transfers we've had on the four zones, four high school zones? I, I, can, do, I can do varsity football. That was something that we looked at about a week or so ago. Um, and this is for varsity only. Uh, I'm going to give you two columns of data. Crest High School has nine transfers on their varsity team. Shelby has 10. Kings Mountain has two. Burns has three. Now let me clarify that. Brian Hull lives in the uh, Kings Mountain zone, but has gone to Washington, to Burnsville, to Burns High School. Those kids could be in there. So that number could be kids that have been their entire career. I did look in the last couple of years. I went back two years. Uh, Crest High School has two transfers within the last two years. Shel two new transfers, excuse These me. These are transfers in two? In two. Two new transfers in the Crest High School. In our system, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. No. Two, at, uh, two at Crest, um, one at Shelby, one at Burns. And the two at Crest, one of those was an employee's child. So, it's, <coughs> and the old criteria is one, one, and one. Kings Mountain had zero. So, at that point, we're really in the last two years, we're talking four students in That's out of the district, right? No, no, no sir. That's from Kings Mountain, Shelby, yes. Shelby, yes. Yeah, so we're talking a, now again, that's in the last two years. So like, a, you know, some of these kids have, have been in Shelby schools their entire career. That's where you're getting that 10 from. But within the last two years, uh, it's, a, it's a smaller number. So that's, and that's something to consider when you look at the committee 
you know, if that student's been in the Burns district for their entire career, are we going to continue to let that kid go up through? I, I would think your policy has been yes traditional, if that's up to you. All right. So, Robert, do you have anything to say myself for last intentionally? I think where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, I've talked to many people. I've talked to athletic directors. I've talked to principals. I've talked to people in our community. Uh, this is a subject that I did not ask to put on this agenda tonight. I want to make sure, but it has sparked some interest with me. Um, I feel that we've got to put our foot down. We've got to put it down hard. We cannot allow this to continue. Um, I do not think this is a problem that happened within the last six, six months, though. I think this is something that has happened in, in, in several years, many years, you know, maybe even five or six. But um, from, from my standpoint, I, I think as a board member, uh, first and foremost, I think that it's something that should be very easily done. Uh, on our transfer report, I want to see two columns. I started with one, but now I want two. Um, I'd like a column at the end of each student's name from 7th grade through 12th grade. Simply, are you participating in athletics or are you not? Yes or no. And then I want to know in that last column, what sport are you playing in? And I want to know that for me. When I go to vote on that student transfer request, I want a report. I want to know if there's students that are at participating athletic, participate in athletic. Um, if, you know, I realize that our, Dr. Hunnell and his staff, it's hard, I think, with, to, to oversee the number of transfers that he gets. If a student answers no, he may have no idea that that student maybe is gonna be a star basketball player or baseball player, and, he, and that student has answered no. If we come back, I think we should add a portion of our policy that says if they answer no and it turns out that they've decided they want to play baseball and we pull it, then that would automatically give them a 365 day suspension because that violated our policy. We, we said we approved them and they said they didn't play in the sport and they decided they were going to. I think that should eliminate them immediately. Um, I believe that once a student enters ninth grade. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association put this rule in place for some reason. Maybe I don't know what it is, but I've done some research on it and I think it was put in place for a reason. I think that Cleveland County Schools should do the same. I think if we start school in ninth grade and they play ninth grade and tenth grade football and they all of a sudden come up here in eleventh grade and they decide they want to transfer for, ath for athletics, then they should be ineligible unless they come before this board. And there's not that many. Of them. There's not going to be 101 of those. Do you believe that? There's not going to be 101. There's going to be very few. Um, I, I think that this is a problem in our community and that we have to look at it. Thank you. Any other questions? I have another question. Is there any, if we have all these hearings and everything, is there any student information confidentiality that might be jeopardized? Uh, not to my knowledge. Dr. Fisher, do you? I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Not to my knowledge. How's about the association is asking for it? I would think we're doing as well. I've got one more question. I had a parent call me, and this was on academics. Not, not an athlete, but come to find out, after they transferred, they decided to play ball. But the main reason at first was due to, uh, to the academics in okay? There, that goes back to sort of what uh, Ms. Falls is saying, uh, you know, about here they, they went for academics at a such and such school, they say that that school is better than any other school and then all of a sudden they changed and they went to play uh, baseball, football and <laughs> Mr. Glover, you know about the cheerleader, okay? 
uh, those cheerleaders, they might not be classified as a sport, but they sure are out there jumping up and down at that football game and that basketball game, reading them on, and I don't know that we're funding enough money that that football squad and that basketball squad should be helping them cheerleaders out on uh, their money instead of it coming out of parents' pockets. Uh, uh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Please don't want to get into that. Okay. I, mean, I think my cheerleaders in this would be when the committee happens. Well, the cheerleader got ruled out of getting it. Don't started. think that we're against I'm just telling you what the high school athletic association okay, but the cheerleaders, they have cheerleader got left out of that 300, on that 365 day rule, if I'm not mistaken, uh, this year. Mr. Blanton, in your scenario, with her recommendation, if she is saying that that child sits out 365 days and in the middle of the school year, that child would decide to participate in sports under her recommendation and your question, that child would have to come to a waiver hearing to participate. If not, they sit out the 365 days participating. Okay. But that's coming from my county. Not under her recommendation. Oh, okay. She is saying that she'd like people to sit out 365 and request a waiver. And request, yes, and request, request a waiver. Right. I'm not saying that I wouldn't make them eligible. I'm just saying that from your standpoint that you approve the transfer. And I think that also what I'm saying is that I hope that the superintendent's office will be strongly say, you know, if we approve this, you are not eligible for 365 days. Unless you go to the, and we can't guarantee that that will be, and hopefully that will deter some of these folks transferring out just by putting your foot down and being stricter and from that standpoint. That's that's just my my thought. Yes, I would wish more of that. Yes, let me just say this. You know, one of the things I think is the reason this has come up. Uh, you know, I think we need to look, first of all, we have got an extremely strong athletic program. Our football program, when you look at the conference, they're all at the top of the conference. The Cleveland County Schools are all doing great. We're looking at, according to this report, we're looking at four kids that have, that have transferred in the last two years. Varsity football. On the, on the, on the, on the varsity football team. So we may have a small problem. We probably don't have a huge problem. We don't need to make a huge move to worry about the four kids. And you said one of these was employee kids, that drops it down to three if we continue that detection, which I think we probably should. So we're looking at three kids. The, the big gorilla in the room that we're not approaching is the fact that most people uh, talk about one of the transfers that's not listed because the person supposedly is living in another residence. And that's something that we're always going to have because uh, if you have money enough to rent a house or buy a house in another district, you can have your kid bonafide or legally change residence. That's not going to be addressed in this policy because we can't address it because legally they just have the residence. So regardless of what we do, we're not going to totally make everybody happy and we need to look back these three varsity kids and probably 20 or 30 other kids that are playing in the county and let's look at it let's do what we need to do but let's not forget that no matter what we do we're not going to solve that problem people get around if you've got the money you can get around the rule and that's the way it's been forever and it's we're going to continue to be that way if there are ways to get around any policy and there are people that are going to find a way and this is not going to stop people finding that way to get around by moving their legal residence. They're going to continue to do that. So this is not going to be a cure-all no matter what we do. But I think, you know, we may need to, I think, you know, looking at a policy like this, but I also don't want to get the board involved in 20 or 30 appeals every year. I think we need to have a committee that's going to, if we're going to look at, we're going to have 20 or 30 probably don't need the board, we probably need to sit back and have a committee rather than being directly involved in the in the actual decision. I was just going to say, I mean, Mr. Oil took a lot of what I was going to say. Um, the huge problem is just not supported by facts. You know, when it boils down to it, when we got um, four 
students and one is an employee's child, that's not a huge problem in my book. I mean, I just don't, I mean, I see, I hear a lot in the community, a lot of misinformation, a lot of information. People can make up stuff all day, every day, but that doesn't, that doesn't match the facts. The facts say that over the last two years in varsity football, where a lot of noise is coming from, we've had essentially one child at three of our high schools transfer. Is that right? I mean, one at Chris, two at Chris, one's at Bluey's child, one at Shelby, one at Burns, nine at Kings Mountain. That's not a big problem in my book. And I think um, it's important for us to look at. Now, if we were to make a move, um, I guess the, the noise is, how's the board overseeing this? If we were to make a move, I'd be all about hearing those individually. But if there's not a huge problem in place, I just don't see the need to make a change. And I don't want to imply that anybody's doing anything illegal when the facts say otherwise. You know, I, I just think it's important to, to keep things in place that seem like they're working. Richard, just simply, uh, Mr. Chair, I would just ditto uh, what uh, Mr. Hall said and uh, uh, what Mr. Thurman said. Uh, I, I don't see it as a major problem. I do see a lot of misinformation, miscommunication that's going on, perception. So I'm seeing you driving it. And, uh, and something that Mr. Hall said that, that's, that's really precipitated this discussion, and that's that elephant in the room, if we want to be honest about it. And it's getting out there on both sides, you know, information, misinformation. And, uh, and I'm not sure I'm in favor of any dramatic changes to our procedures and policies and practices at this point. So that's just my comment. Anybody else? Yes. <clears throat> We're talking about two new ones here and zero there and one here and one there. We're still missing that Crest has nine transfers on their football team. Shelby has ten. Kings Mountain has two and Burns has three. There is a problem. And, you might, and guys, I hope those numbers are they're pretty close. I mean, we may be any, anybody them. else? I want to say one last thing. I'm not in favor of anything. I'm going to classify our athletes in two areas. A student athlete and then an athlete student. An athlete student, in my mind, is the one that we want to prevent Now, we cannot penalize the student athlete whether they play tiddly wings or whether they play football if they're bona fide student quote first. So whatever we decide to have we answered your question. Well I don't think we have I don't think we have if I kind of sum it up if you I, I still have lots of questions so if, if I, I, let me see if I sum it up and then yeah. maybe we, we can we can do this. We're already past the time. I, I think you know in talking to me and Gobi there have been some concerns about the three hundred and sixty five day uh, period. And, and that's something that is um, you know been talked about and, and everything. I do see a way that this process works effectively and efficiently if we decide to do the 365. Because I think at the end, when we go through a good, effective, and efficient process, we're going to come down to a small number of hearings that, to use Dr. Hammer's words, may be athlete students or may be transferred because of, of uh, athletes. And in the past, we tried to go through, and many of you have remembered, we sat through a hearing where we transferred to the nine because we felt like that student was transferring because of athletics and we would deny the transfer. But that is very difficult sometimes to, 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 to know. So if, if we decided to, and the reason we're talking about this today, because there has been some chatter, and we do need a, a little bit of direction from the board so we can bring you back a proposed policy because this would change our board policy. Uh, it would change our athletic procedures. It would change our board policy. If we decided to go to a 365-day uh, ineligibility period, so to speak, then, then I think we would need a, a system to, uh, because there are student athletes that transfer for a variety of reasons. It may be that the student has gone to uh, Graham Elementary, Shelby Intermediate, Shelby Middle, and is attending Shelby High School. And because of financial reasons, the family lost their home and they had to move. And so in, in the past, we've not made that child uh, move schools. And so we would want to keep that transfer there to that school. But also, there may be a homelessness issue that a child is forced to move, and because of, of their 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 you know, finances, they can't get transportation to Shelby High School, so they need to go to Crest High School. They ride the bus, 
And that student did transfer because of athletics. They transferred because they needed to ride the bus. And so that child, in my opinion, should be able to play athletics because there's a there's a reason for their move home. So so I, if we decided to move towards a 365, my my thought would be to have a committee, and that committee would would be consist of our athletic directors and then representative from all four attendance zones. But that committee look at a set criteria to to whether to conclude whether that child would be eligible. It would not be a, a haphazard. Uh, you know, something you wrote down, that type of thing. We would have a set set of criteria, such as did the student attend the feeder zone the two previous semesters? Meaning that they went to Shelby Middle School the two previous semesters, they want to transfer to Shelby High School, they would be eligible. Did they did they transfer to remain in their current attendance zone? They would be eligible. Is an IEP team decision? They would be eligible. Uh, special programs such as social services or DJJ or something like that that place them somewhere. They would be eligible. Uh, homelessness, they would be eligible. If we changed our policy, we would need to include something for unsafe schools. They would be eligible. So we would have a criteria for our community to look and say, okay, this child met this criteria, bingo, they're eligible. If they did not meet any of that set criteria, then they would be ineligible because they all the criteria that they had, they, they were ineligible. So those students then would, would be eligible for 365 unless they wanted to appeal that decision. That appeal, that decision, that appeal decision would come to the board. It's my belief that that number would be relatively small. Uh, most of the students that transfer, uh, uh, you know, and I, Brian, I don't mean to, uh, to, to interpret your work, but I think you correct me if I'm wrong, of the 10 transfers to Crest High School, eight of them would have been made eligible because they attended the two previous semesters in their feeder zone. That means they went to Crest Middle School the many of those students went to Bowling Springs Elementary, they went to Springmore County 3, they went to Crest Middle, they're trying to apply to transfer to Crest High School, they would be eligible. And plus, they would not really meet the high school athletic association criteria that says once entered in ninth grade, if they change schools. See, that's an important caveat that sometimes we we skip over there a little bit is is is, is that eligibility upon entering in ninth grade. Um, if we did something like this, and I've tried to take different input from, from the board members and sketch out some notes here, if we did something like this, I think that we could um, maintain a sense of, uh, of effective efficient operations. We would not you know, overburden or overwork our schools or our staff, but also we would provide the board some oversight. We could give the board a report to say, okay, we made these 30 child children eligible, and here are the reasons why children or given an eligibility. You can see we had 12 that were called the previous semester. We had five because they transferred into current zone. We had, you know, whatever the criteria were. And we would we would work with legal counsel and making sure we were uh, defendable in those criteria. And then those that didn't meet any of those criteria, if they didn't want to play sports, like Ms. Paul said, they wouldn't there wouldn't be any. We would have some of those that didn't want to play sports. But if they, they decided at some point, you know, I didn't meet any of those criteria, but I want to play sports, so then I would have to set up an appeal here. To, to, to get out of my 365. Um, that, just to throw that out there as a compromise, not necessarily a compromise, but a, but a strategy of how we can implement you know, the 365 board oversight, but at the same time, not throwing away with the system that we've got that's working, you know, for the most part, well, but there always are a couple of situations that are probably some concerns. That would have to come to you as a policy recommendation. We're looking for a little guidance. Of, of what the board would like to see at the end of the term of question? I think my questions are more on the nitpicky side of the what ifs, you know, and maybe that comes after a policy recommendation because I keep thinking right now our transfer policy is, I mean, just for anybody, everybody, whether they're athlete, non athlete. As long as there's, I mean, what we've told you then the new is that if there's room in that grade level, if there's room in that class, then then it's okay whether they're an employee's child or not, they, they, they can transfer. And so pretty much it's a fair playing field for all those students. When you add the, the question of do you play athletics, that skews it some for those children um, except for our employees children they're still automatically the way we look at it now 
they're still automatically eligible to play. So that's what I'm hearing, right? That any transfer. Any, any transfer. And so then the playing field is not level for the employee's child who is an athlete versus just, you know, for example, my child who, you know, if, if one of them had been an athlete. So I guess that's where I have a little, little bit of a problem that the, and, and I'm not opposed to our employees getting those, I mean, it's a, a perk, we've always said that, to be able to allow their child to go to the school that they want to go to. But our non-employee children who are athletes don't get that same opportunity. And I don't want to keep going on if I've made sense already. I, I, like I said, my, my questions are more the, the what ifs, you know, and, and I know we'll never answer all of those, but to me that's a big one that our regular transfer policy is fair, I think, but when it comes to if we make this drastic change, it's going to be drastically unfair to children whose parents are not employees. So, but I'm not saying I don't want to make a change. It's just, that's just a question that how, how will we handle that? And, and I think that that's one of the reasons why I did not include my list for this employees' children because we don't do that. Yeah. They would need to set these criteria. Most of our children that transfer to high school have been attended a feeder in the school for two weeks a semester. Most, I would say, 90% of them do that. They, 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 they do that. And so that would, we would get a, long, a, a strong percentage of ours would at a committee would, would, get, would get a check and approval on the back standard, whether they were employees' children or not employees' children. But the, the ones that that went to Shelby Middle that wanted to go to Burns High, those are the ones that we have to look a little deeper and say, why are you trying to change the tension on us? Is it because all the bad legs? Is it because of my legs? That would be, I think that, that addresses some of the concerns that there is. Is, is there a bad reason? There may be lots of other reasons, you know, but, but that would be the reason. Well, it would be unreasonable to say, since we're already almost 15 minutes in the supper, uh, it would be reasonable to say, at the next work session, we'll complete this, or do you want to come back to us with a recommendation? I, I don't have, I, I think I see it's about half and half. You all correct me if I'm wrong. I like his idea on, on the committee. Um, I like that idea. I, I can support the idea of, of the committee. We're already doing that in a small measure. Whenever schools develop the eligibility list, it used to be the High School, High School Athletic Association rules, and I guess it still is. You had to share that eligibility list with everybody else in your conference. So we're already publishing that, at least within a conference, a, a committee uh, you know, to, to look over and see what the schools have. You know, we're look, just looking at it right now from 30,000 feet. But the concept, I think, is same. And in addition to that, whether we do that or whether we don't, I do like Mr. Paul's idea of having a, list, a column out there that, that lists the athletics. We've already got it on the form where they told us whether they want to participate in athletics or not. So it doesn't take any extra digging on the part of the staff. All they got to do is just take whatever answer there and at least give us that piece of information. I think that sounds nice as well. If it's okay with the board, then I would I'll bring back a little work over the next couple of weeks or a week or so to try to bring a draft policy to our next meeting because this is a little time sensitive in that our transfer period begins February. So we need to have something in place so that those students, students that are transferring know. Obviously, if I apply for a transfer and I get accepted, then I realize, oh, you know, I may, it may impact me else. But I don't have to accept that transfer. You know, I, I could always say, we have students every year that get a transfer to Kingsland High School or Crest High School, wherever, and say, ah, oh, you know, on second thought, I'm going to stay at my home school. And we have a lot of those. So, um, but they would have that option. But we do need to, when we, when we send that transfer home, form home, we would also want to attach a, a memo to explain our policy. So we would, the board would so we would bring you some, some samples uh, for our next meeting. We would have to adopt that. Obviously, we would, that would be a first read. We would adopt in, in December or January in time for that. I'll make it quick. Uh, I know of one, uh, one child, he transferred from Shelby High School to Crest High School and he was strictly for vocation. Well, he got over there. He didn't get vocational, but uh, in other words, what he wanted to go to school for, he got put somewhere else. 
He's not even getting to do uh, what he actually transferred for. They said because that particular thing was strictly freshman and he was in the 10th grade. And uh, he said, well, I guess I just well stayed in shelf. And it might be worked out next semester or something else like that. So uh, maybe we own these transfers that we need to make sure that what a person's going for, because that was going to be his field and career. That's the reason he wanted to go to Crest High School, and he's not even getting to do his field and career. Thank you. Uh, we're supposed to be through in 15 minutes. Let's make it 20 minutes. Let's make that. Start meeting. Can't we, Mom? Are we going to eat in there?